to say you don't have the room for an HDMI monitor, keyboard, and mouse to connect to your Raspberry Pi. Maybe you don't have the equipment. Don't worry about it. Just use the built-in serial port. In our lesson on asynchronous serial communication, we talked about how the protocol is a really quick and easy way to connect two devices, point to point. The Raspberry Pi is a perfect candidate for this. The reason? Well, let's look at the Raspberry Pi. First of all, you've got all sorts of ways of connecting to it. You could connect a full-blown HDMI monitor, a keyboard and mouse, all sorts of devices and have it act like a real computer. But maybe that's not your use for the Raspberry Pi. Maybe you're trying to set it up as an embedded system. Great, we have SSH, we can connect to it through a network. Well, that works, except maybe you're doing some things that you don't want to have running on your network, or maybe you don't have a network. We can use the serial protocol communication using three pins coming off of the Raspberry Pi. Now, if you're familiar with the header coming off of the edge of the board of the Raspberry Pi, remember there's that 40 pin GPIO header. Well, we've got a couple of pins here which are connected to VCC, but then we have a ground, we have a transmit data, and we have a receive data. Turns out there are a number of ways we can connect to those pins. We talked a little bit in that asynchronous serial communications uh, lesson about this DB9 port on the back of the uh, on the back of many computers. And so this DB9 has signal ground and it has transmit and it has receive all those pins that go here problem is is that the voltage levels coming out of that db9 are based on the rs232 standard which means that they could go as high as positive 15 volts and as low as negative 15 volts these guys we're looking for a logic zero to be zero volts and a logic one to be 3.3 volts. That doesn't map well to the RS-232 standard. So you need some sort of an adapter and they do exist, but not all machines have these DB9 connectors on the back of their machine, but most all machines have USB ports. Now the problem with USB ports is that the signals or the protocol coming out of them include addressing along with the data. So the protocol itself, the rules that are followed to create a USB frame are different than those that are used for the asynchronous serial. But don't worry, there is a way to convert that. There is a USB to asynchronous serial converter or adapter. The one that I'm going to use is based on the FTDI chip. That chipset, what it does is it converts the USB protocol to the asynchronous serial. Now there are a couple of these asynchronous serial communications, lots of them, but some of them are based on five volts, some of them are based on 3.3 volts. The 3.3 volt is the one that we need to connect to the Raspberry Pi. So whenever you're purchasing one of these FTDI cables, one of these adapters, you make sure if you're connecting to the Raspberry Pi that you select the one that is set up for 3.3 volts. Now the modifications are quite simple. On the one that I'm going to use, you've got six wires coming from the FTDI chip. And these are labeled pin one, two, three, four, five, six. Pin one, that is our signal ground. Pin two, this is our clear to send, and it is a handshaking uh, signal that is used in conjunction with what's on pin six, which is our, uh, our ready to send, RTS. We have pin three, this is VCC, a source voltage, we're not gonna be using that. But pin four, what we have is transmit data, and pin five, we have receive data. To make the connection to the Raspberry Pi, we're only going to use three of these pins. We are going to connect our grounds together. And by connecting our grounds together, we have the same voltage reference for both our, device, our Raspberry Pi and the serial connections for our FTDI chip. 
the transmit data is where we're going to be sending data from the TDI chip. That means that that data has to go into the receive data. So we're going to connect the receive data to the transmit data on the FTDI uh, circuit. The receive data for the FTDI uh, adapter, that's where data is going to be coming into our machine, our development machine. So that needs to be connected to the transmit data from our Raspberry Pi. All right, let's move to the workbench and actually make this adapter, set up this adapter so it can be connected to the Raspberry Pi. It doesn't take a whole lot of parts in order to make this connection between the Raspberry Pi and your development machine via the asynchronous serial connection. What we need is the actual adapter, the cable, and it has in it the FTDI uh, electronics in order to convert from USB into the asynchronous serial protocol. Specifically, the one for 3.3 volts if you're connecting to a Raspberry Pi. Please understand that these cables come in two forms, one with 5 volt and one with 3.3 volt. The Raspberry Pi requires the 3.3 volt version. So you need a Raspberry Pi, of course, and a screwdriver or some small pointed object uh, like a pen knife or something in order to remove. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing most of, the, most of the connectors from this header here in order to rearrange the pins and make it so that we can connect it directly up to the header on the Raspberry Pi. And then we'll also need some electrical tape in order to make it so that we can insulate the unused connectors on our header. So let's take a look at exactly what we're going to be doing first. Clear a little space here. On the Raspberry Pi, on the side of it, you have this 40 pin header. And I'm not going to draw all the pins there, but basically you're pin one, pin two, so you got one, two, three, four, five, six, and so forth. Now these top two pins here, these are VCC or five volts. Yes, it sounds like I just told you that the Raspberry Pi runs on 3.3 volts. Why is there a five volt available there? Well, that five volts actually is coming directly from the power supply. It'll help you power up things that require five volts, but the Raspberry Pi itself requires 3.3 volts. The next pin down here, this guy, and we're gonna talk about this is pin, physical pin, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's physical pin six. And physical pin six, we are going to connect to our signal ground. This next pin here, pin eight, this guy is our transmit data. This is from the point of view of the Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi is going to be sending data out that pin. And then this pin right here, pin 10, this is our received data. Now, please, before you make any connections to the FTD, uh, FTDI header, make sure that you look at the documentation that came with that header to identify exactly which pins we are connecting to. So if I look at this header right here, what I've got are, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six connections. I'm just drawing these little rectangles here. So what we're looking at is pins one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we're only gonna be using three of these because remember a minimal asynchronous serial connection requires only three connections. Specifically, we require signal ground. That is this pin one and that's this black wire right here. Now, the rest of the connections we've got, well, CTS, that's clear to send. Remember that that's a, a, one of those handshaking signals. We're not gonna be using it here. VCC, this is a source voltage coming off of the FTDI header. Uh, then we have TXD and RXD. This is our transmit and receive. Now remember, these are from the point of view of the cable. They're not to be connected uh, pin to pin on the Raspberry 
Pi because the Raspberry Pi's RxD is the one it's going to be receiving data on and so it needs to have the TXD connected to it so that the transmission from the cable can go into the Raspberry Pi. And similarly for the RxD pin, this pin 5, that is going to be connected to the TXD of our uh, Raspberry Pi's header. And then the last connection here is RTS, that's the second handshaking signal. So let's go ahead and get access to those wires. Really simple, all we have to do and all we're going to do is set it up so that this black wire here, and I should have probably given you the colors here, we've got black for pin 1, brown for pin 2, VCC is going to be a red wire, then we have orange for the transmit, we have yellow for the uh, receive, and then RTS is green. Now it's time to remove the wires in order to connect them correctly in our header so we can just slide it over the Raspberry Pi's GPIO header. Lift up gently on each one of these little black flaps and the little cable should slide out. Be very gentle because we are going to be using these little flaps in order to hold the pins in when we, when we reinsert them in the proper order. I need you to remove all of them except for the black one which represents signal ground. The signal ground is going to be our reference. Now that we've got all of our wires removed, what we're going to do is make sure the proper connections are made to this connector so that they line up with the pins of our Raspberry Pi's header. Now we've got the black wire which is going to stay in pin 1 position connected to our signal ground. Now the transmit data from the point of view of the Raspberry Pi needs to be connected to the receive data of the of the TDI head and the FTDI header. That is the yellow wire. So we are going to take the yellow wire, the one that was connected to pin 5, and we're going to slide it in to the next connector right next to the signal ground. And if you have not damaged any of these black flaps, they should be good enough to hold in that connector once it's fully inserted. The next one is going to be our TXD, the orange one, because the TXD of the header is connected to the RXD, pin 10, of our Raspberry Pi's header. So we take the orange wire, we slide it in, and please be aware that the side that gets connected to these little, the, the, the flap, in other words, these little black flaps here, they are going to clip on the pieces, the tabs of our little, these little metal sleeves, the metal crimped ends that slide in. So make sure that you slide it in in the proper direction so that it stays connected in there. Now what about these remaining connectors? Well, we can't just leave them hanging because if they touch each other, they may short and damage our cable. So what we're going to do is now get our electrical tape and cut off a portion of it. Get a, you know, maybe a couple of inches, maybe three inches. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one at a time. I am going to tape up this connector so that it is protected, it's insulated from getting connected to any of the other conductors. So just simply, just simply wrap this tape around and make sure that you keep them spread apart so that there's no chance of them shorting against each other. And there you go, there's your connection. Now what we need to do is take our Raspberry Pi and note that this black wire right here is going to go to pin 6. So you're going to slide it on this outside row of pins so that you've got these two pins that are un uncovered here, these two pins going to VCC. The next pin should be connected to the black wire of the FTDI header. The next one, the transmit, should be connected to the yellow wire. And the last one, the receive, should be connected to the orange wire. Now all it takes is connecting this to the USB port of our development machine so that we can access the terminal. Now we're just about ready to connect our Raspberry Pi through the UART on the Raspberry Pi GPIO header to our development machine. But before we do, we need to do a modification to the SD card containing our Raspberry Pi operating system. 
So, insert the Raspberry Pi operating system, the SD card containing the Raspberry Pi operating system, into an SD card reader that's connected to your development machine. And when it comes up, you'll notice that it's actually going to pop up with a number of errors. It's going to say that there are certain partitions that are unreadable. That's okay. They're fine. But with, especially whenever you have a Windows operating system, it's not going to be capable of reading all the partitions. It will, however, be capable of reading one partition in particular, and that is our boot partition. This boot partition contains a number of things that are used by the Raspberry Pi whenever it comes up in order to bring up the operating system and have it configured properly. Now, one of the files up there you'll see is config.txt. Now, we're going to open up this file, which contains a number of items. We are going to make it so that this configuration file tells the Raspberry Pi upon boot up, go ahead and check that UART to see if there's a terminal connected there. You can go ahead and boot in through that terminal. In order to do that, we have to enter a specific line of configuration. And that line is enable underscore UART equals one. And by adding this setting to our config.txt file, what we're going to do is tell the Raspberry Pi, check for a connection to the UART for somebody to log in to a terminal. We'll go ahead and save this and close our editor and then properly eject the SD card. Once we've ejected the SD card, now we can insert it into our Raspberry Pi, then make the connection for our uh, USB to UART adapter. In Device Manager, and once again, I'm running on a Microsoft Windows operating system, when I'm looking at Device Manager, you'll see that there's nothing at all showing that there's a communication port, a UART available. Once I plug in this USB, however, it's going to find that port, load any available device drivers, and identify it as a COM port. Notice up here we have ports now, COM and LPT, and specifically a USB serial port set up for COM5. Please beware, there have been some problems with the device drivers for these USB to UART adapters being loaded properly with the later versions of Windows. There are, however, just a search on the web, will give you the latest, uh, the latest device drivers for these adapters that you can install with your particular operating system. The thing to note here is that COM5, because COM5 is what we are going to use whenever we run our terminal program. In my case, I'm going to run PuTTY. Now, once we bring up PuTTY, you're going to see a number of connection type options, one of which is serial. Serial is actually your asynchronous serial protocol that we are going to communicate to the Raspberry Pi through our adapter with. So we select serial, and you'll notice that it'll come up as a default of COM1. Well, if we look over at our device manager, you'll see that the COM port that was assigned to our adapter, in my case, was COM5. More than likely, it won't be the same for all devices. So anyway, we're going to set, set it up as COM5, so that's our connection to this adapter. Right here, we've got a default speed of 9600. We need to change that to 115,200, which is the default setting for the Raspberry Pi when it comes up. Whenever we go ahead and hit connect uh, or open, we should get a connection window. Now I'm going to go ahead and power up the Raspberry Pi. It may take a delay before you see any uh, output from this uh, terminal, but you will see it as soon as the Raspberry Pi finishes booting up. And now we've got our login. So we log in like you would normally. So I'm going to just use my standard Pi, conne Pi connection. And there you go. I have a fully functional terminal that does not require a network of any, any sort, uh, and I don't need an HDMI monitor or any keyboard. It's just simply an adapter that's connected to my USB port that goes to the header on the Raspberry Pi to give me a full terminal interface.